Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get into it. Let's start out, ditch the knife, let's start out with a postcard, because we don't get too many postcards these days. It's from Carsten, thank you very much. He's actually from Perth, Western Australia, but ended up in the Heinz Nixdorf Museum in Paperborn in Germany. Hi to all my German viewers. Um, fourth highest uh, demographic country, I think, for EV blog viewership. Anyway, it includes um, old Nokia 5110s along with an Altair, um, a classic Altair 8800 computer. It's like, huh? <laughs> you got it. I just find it rather hilarious that they've mixed like Altairs with Nokia like 5110s or whatever. Nothing wrong with the 5110. Still use one. They still sell a variant of the Nokia 5110. It's not the 5110, it's some other number, isn't it? But they still sell a variant of that. So anyway, I just find that rather hilarious, just mixing up those with an Apple one and, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, from Perth. So let's get into it. What's this one? I don't know. Random. I've got a few ra reasonable size ones, so let's give it a bow. This one's from Michael Tandy. Thank you very much. He's from the old Dart. Kind of rings a bell. Or am I confusing because we've had you know, much Tandy stuff on the mailbag before. It's just defective electronics. Spoiler alert. So let's have a look. We have a note. I'll read the note later. We have. Oh, that looks like some sort of lasery scanning module. That's really industrial laser scanning thingamabob. Is it some like a theodolite or something like that? I don't know. Like a that looks like oh it could be. No, is it a laser distance measuring? Thing. Okay, we've got some Siemens um, industrial controllers. Uh, we've got some Schneider electric. Um, they no, they moved. They were here in the uh, in the business park, and they're now moved. So anyway, well, Schneider Australia. Anyway, cool. Let's check it out. Aha! Thank you very much, Michael Tandy. These are uh, some very miscellaneous items that come from a control system for a thousand robot automated warehouse. I'll have to uh, uh, check out this video and I'll include it up here somewhere. I'm um, a little demo and you can have a look where, yeah, thousands of robots. So obviously, so this laser unit here was a uh, barcode scanner. Of course, it's probably on, like on the side of the robot and the robot scans the box that it's, uh, you know, trying to get from the shelf and deliver or whatever like that so yeah let's do a quick tear down Lose lose electronic the sensor people <laughs> mirror in there that's going to spin around to scan I assume it's, is that only a 2d one or is that a uh, 3D jobby as well? There's the details for those playing along at home, made in Germany, um, UL listed and all the good stuff. So yeah, it's like it's all die cast uh, box, you know, built like a brick dummy. Little interface on this side that obviously like uh, that is a <laughs> like a huge big custom interface. Maybe that just like screws on side of the robot or something and it goes into the, um, you know, straight into the processing and things like that, but yeah, that is that is super rugged. Speaking of large warehouses, there is a, well, it's not that new anymore, but there is now an Amazon warehouse here in Sydney. It's always been on my list to uh, contact them and say, hey, I'm the EV blog. <laughs> not that they know who I am, but, or care, but anyway, can I do a tour of the uh, Amazon warehouse? So yeah, um, please um, poke me periodically and remind me to do that. There we go, we're in Lake Flynn. There's our rotating merry mirror, and I can because this is dead. Uh, people will be screaming, "Don't do it, Dave! Don't do it!" But there, yeah, yeah, I can make it spin, and um, so that spins in that direction. And is that one there fixed? Oh yeah, it's only a one milliwatt jobby. I think it's half. Is it half a milliwatt here for importing the standard laser? Anyway, so yeah, that actually probably looks more like the laser driver, does it? Shoots out there, bounces off there comes back, bounces off there, and then bounces off this, and then back over into the mirror over here. It's interesting that they've got these serrations in here, and all the laser experts will be able to uh, tell us, but I reckon that's for, uh, like, you know, backscattering type thing. It's sort of like, if it doesn't hit, it sort of bounces off maybe, and it, it's, I, I reckon there's a reason for that. You wouldn't just do that sort of thing willy-nilly. So that's obviously only a uh, 2D barcode scanner because there's no ability to 
that's uh, that's that's fixed. There's no ability to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, in the uh, vertical direction. No, 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 no. I think it's only a 2D job. There's a little photo sensor there that just uh, detects when this thing's at a particular point because you probably want to know, um, you know, fairly precisely where it is. Once you get that point that it comes through, then uh, the rest is just uh, timing because you'd know the speed of rotation and all that sort of jazz. So, yep. But I think all those mirrors look identical. Hmm. It's the Preventer Safety Relay. I like the name. Uh, 230 volts AC. None of that uh, 110 Yankee rubbish. UL listed. Schneider Electric. As I said, they used to be down the road, but then they uh, packed up and moved. Anyway, made in Indonesia. So what sort of safety relay is it? Doesn't look like an earth leakage circuit breaker. Input A, B. It's got, like, timers. So that's... I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to RTFM on that one. But uh, anyway, looks like it's a multi-pole jobby. Quality seal. And this bastard has no screws on it whatsoever. I said bastard, so uh, this is obviously not a child or uh, kid-directed video, if you've seen my latest one. So, got to put that in there. Um, yeah, anyway, I think this front panel will come off and then maybe it'll come apart somehow. Aha, that's how it comes apart. Yep, it's just got the clips in there and slides out. I think we've seen um, this sort of construction with other uh, industrial din railing stuff before, haven't we? Anyway, oh, a real fair income relay. Look at that. Oh, that's a Bobby Dazzler. There you go for all you relay fanboys. That's terrific. Look at the size of the coil in that. Beautiful. Thing of beauty. It's joy forever. Yes, I uh, now seem to recall that I have uh, extolled the virtues of these uh, screwless construction modules. I don't think it was a, I don't know if it was a uh, Schneider one that we looked at uh, last time. But yeah, like, I don't think you'll find a single screw in all this. It's designed to sort of just get, like, be assembled together and be robust without a single screw, which of course is an extra manual operation. In assembly, not that uh, they're, you know, penny pinching every cent on these things, but uh, yeah, anyway, it's nice that they've gone to the effort. And of course, these are just uh, standard Molex plugs. Um, I could I could cut the shame they're not four-way. I could uh, cut them right down the uh, middle there, and uh, they'll, they'll go in the parts drawer, that's for sure. So yeah, this is just beautiful. Once you get the connectors out, then this... Is going to split down the middle in two boards like that. This is going to. Is there anything holding? Oh, any. I need to get the top ones off. There we go. I think she'll probably come off now. Unless this. Oh, hey, there we go. Look at that. And it just comes apart like that. That is just gorgeous. That is gorgeous construction. Hats off to the. Uh, Design engineers at Schneider, and look at that. Ah, beautiful. Got two uh, uh, wafer switch wafer uh, boards there, and they're just physically uh, right angle soldered. I've uh, done this in uh, design videos uh, before. I've mentioned this sort of uh, construction. I've done much of this over the years where you. Um, yeah, do right angle boards, you can build up cubes and everything else. And uh, people think solder is uh, very weak, but solder, its primary job is to be a mechanical connection, a solid mechanical connection for, you know, components and stuff like that. So you can really get a lot of uh, good rigidity out of a uh, solder joint like that. So, yeah, that's just fantastic. Look at that. It's just, it's just beautiful, beautiful construction. Love it. That's just so superbly designed. How it folds up, the relays, the two on each side, they go like that. These boards are soldered on here, with the right angle leads, and it's not a single screw, this entire thing. It's just, oh, it's, I think I need to go lie down. Oh, by the way, I still have no idea what it does. Um, safety relay, some sort of overload timer thing, I don't know. Um, you could uh, maybe guess. Anyone want to... Uh, Guess at the construction of that. What 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 caps do they use? Oh, Yagos. There you go. They're all right. Sorry, almost forgot all you uh, relay aficionados out there. There are many. Um, hard to read with these uh, trans. I love the transparent packages. It is hard to read the part numbers, but that's a uh, that's a Keiko. I don't think I've heard of a Keiko before. Uh, Bueller. 
Aha, another safety relay. Will Siemens be able to outdo Schneider? Who make this stuff in Indonesia? Well, this anyway. Um, this one's actually made in Germany, so not the same form factor, but uh, let's see. Ah, oh, use the Molex. That's a Sirius, Siemens Sirius. I'm sure somebody in my audience will know exactly what that is. I like that that flips up and it's got the various, uh, uh, you know, info inside there. That's, that's you know, they're, they're, these industrial things, they're really designed very nicely with, with a lot of thought given to, uh, you know, the people that have to actually use these things. And of course, they're going to use the best quality parts. They're going to be ultra reliable and everything else. So I wonder what that is. Is that... I don't know. The spring there holding something together. Do I have to take that off? No. There's no split down there. Hmm. So this whole assembly here looks like it's going to slide off like that. It's not easy. Going to have to get the old screwdriver in there. So I need to slice and dice on that. So that'll pop the back side off. I think all these, will they come out individually? Going to need a hand. Yep. There we go. Look at that. So they've got uh, dual wipe contacts down in there. And is that, do I assume, are they two separate contacts? Anyway, it's very nice. Completely custom solution, of course. Probably, almost, most likely not compatible with any other manufacturer. Dave's a dumbass. Look, there's a clip on there. Of course there is. I was trying to force that bugger. And uh, no, <laughs> of course there's an easy way to do it. <laughs> Dolt. <laughs> Sure, all the uh, people who've used these are just screaming at me. It was completely obvious. Anyway, that is very nice because if any one of the, any of these wears out, you can uh, change them. And the good, the other good thing is that once you've got your wiring in there, if you've got a faulty module, you know one fails. Doesn't matter how good their design. You know, eventually there's an MTB or a mean time between failure on uh, even the best stuff. Then uh, you can leave all your cables connected. And so you don't have to dick around because a screwing and unscrewing a whole bunch of cables and they're all flapping around in the breeze and they've, you know, you can mix them up if they're not labelled right and even if they're labelled right, you can come a gutser and like, yeah, it's just like you can just leave the, like leave them unconnected. Of course, you could accidentally put this one back in here when you're meant to put it in here, but there's less risk if you're, you know, than if you've got nine wires, if you've got three of these compared to nine wires flapping around in the breeze, um, if you had to undo them all, so you can undo those and then pull this out and uh, replace the module and you've still got the interconnects. Beautiful. All right, let's pull it out. Oh, I realize, look at those. TE connectivity, Shrek. That's got to be uh, Shrek's German brother. Shrek. Didn't know he was into making relays. Anyway, that's a gorgeous looking relay, isn't it? Fantastic. It's in a much lower... Uh, profile form factor would they you know because this wouldn't be like a uh, off the shelf jobby would it you know they're probably uh, custom commissioned those perhaps got a little uh, test interface I mean I don't think these are these are pretty dumb I don't think they have any uh, smarts in them I don't think you'll find a micro in these I don't think we saw one on this one over here uh, I didn't really look at those chips sorry I should have can't read those these here I'm not using my external monitor now I can get this front out. Yeah, I'm being a bit brutal. I mean, a bit medieval on its ass here. But uh, is that gonna is that gonna split aside? Well, this one not as easy to get apart because you've got to split the label. So in that way, the Schneider one's better. But uh, oh, oh no, no, this one, this one's this is a programmable jobby. This is much more advanced. Look at that. That looks like an Atmel. There you go. All the Atmel fanboys go wild. What one's that? Absolutely terrific. People complain like I can't see stuff. It's not because of my sight. It's because it's hard to read a little like three inch LCD um, thing. You're watching this on an almost certainly bigger monitor in even 720p. Um, yeah, you're going to be able to see it. That's the, that's the programming interface. So this might be some sort of... Uh, where well, this one over here might be some sort of external thing. Is that a big uh, shunt resistor there? And are they little uh, amplifiers for measuring uh, the current shunt or something like that? Anyway, there's a lot of trainings on there. Wow. Another couple of big power resistors over here as well. And uh, lots of electros there. They're the old school vented ones, you can tell by the uh, marks in there like that. Are they Nippon Chemicon? 
Is it a Nippon Chemicon symbol? Anyway, we've got our Shrek relays. We've got another processor on there. Do another Atmel processor on there. Wow, so this one is a lot more complicated. Wow, look at that. I've got a poly switch down there. Don't, but doesn't that... I mean, the quality of this... Uh, this PCB material just looks absolutely fantastic. It's not your, uh, you know, your two dollar uh, jobby delivered. This is, you know, real top quality fiberglass material, uh, high temperature rated, all the rest of it, really gorgeous. Oh, look at those! They are oh, they're they're little LEDs. Okay, they must go into light pipes on the front, and of course, all the uh, custom inner connects for those modules. Now that one is gorgeous, but. Which one wins out of those two? Oh, I, I reckon, like, Siemens might have it. Um, I, I like the simplicity of this one. This one's got, uh, so they're both safety relays. I don't know, you'd have to look at the data sheets and the what they actually do and stuff like that. But uh, this one's got no, um, you know, is much simpler. But uh, this one is, ah, uh, this one's it's pretty gorgeous. I do like this, although I do prefer... The Molex connectors on here. I'm a Molex connector fanboy. Don't like these. Uh, these I mean, they're beautifully designed and engineered custom connectors on here. But I think I'd uh, I'd prefer the old school uh, Phoenix to those. But oh, let us know in the comments down below which one which one wins the shootout. Maybe I'll include a. Can you? Yeah, I can include a card with a pole. That's what I'll do. A pop up. In this corner up here, right now, if I remember, remind me, there'll be a little pop-up card and it'll be a poll. Which one is the better design? Which one wins? Well, there's a new country in the EU. It's called EU01. Um, <laughs> what's that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, these are all UL listed, of course. Uh, this is a Finder. Is that the model? Yeah, no, that's the brand. Finder. Okay, never heard of them. I'm not in this business. So, um, what is this? Uh, programmable um, the trip time. There you go. Little timing diagram. Things like that. So, it's a little mechanical timer, is it? I don't think it's uh, doing it based on... Uh, no, current. Yeah, it's just a timer. This mongrel. Look at this. Riveted shut. And that screw rubbish rivets all the way with LBJ. Ah, that's hilarious. Look at this. TO220 flapping around in the breeze there, just bent over to fit inside this uh, form factor, that uh, capacitor. That was uh, me with my uh, screwdriver getting a bit medieval on its ass. And that one is a, that's a Yego brand. That's all right. Got some MOVs there, do we? A little micro in there. What's that? Oh, the last one was an Atmel. And uh, there you go. All you PIC fanboys go wild. Old school PIC 16C 621. Is it? Oh, that's, that's terrific. And this uh, relay is on a right angle. It's got its own custom little right angle board like that. So that's interesting. I wonder if it came from the manufacturer like that or they just designed it like that. But that's that's interesting, isn't it? A mix of uh, through hole and SMD inside a small form factor. It's kind of not what I sort of, you know, things just bent over to fit and stuff like that. But yeah, I... Guess it does the business as long as it doesn't get, get too warm in there. You know the cap's well away from uh, this. What is that anyway? It's a regulator, is it? That's an IRF 840. So that's a tranny. And that's all she wrote. Uh, not as interesting as the other two. Anyway, thanks, Michael. They were really fascinating. Sorry if I waxed lyrical about those, but yeah, I really love great quality design like these. Got one from Australia. No worries. Thank you very much, Justin Richards from Padbury. Haven't heard of Padbury. Anyway, it's from West. It's in Western Australia. So hi to all my Western Australian viewers. I can see the note poking out of the top. Aha! Uh -huh, it's a foldy box thing. Ugh, there we go. Notes, notes, notes. It looks like um, we have a, a. It's a HTC something or other. Looks ominous. Looks like one of those. You know audio foolery um, wank devices that you just, you know, sit in the middle of your room and or strategically place it in your room, of course, and it absorbs all the bad frequencies. And you know, I, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's like it's one of those, like, uh, Alexa, Google Home thingies, whatever you call it. I don't know. That's a deep USB socket in there. Let's read the note. HTC Vive base station teardown for VR. VR? It's a virtual reality. 
I don't, I don't know what HTC Vive is. I'm not up on all these hip new things. This one has failed. Notice poor controller tracking and use the old camera trick to determine right. So it's a uh, like an enhanced Microsoft um, Connect thing which started all the craze. Tried fault finding by swapping the IR laser module. Geez, you were keen. Um, <laughs> between drivers. Now both drivers appear dead as swapping back. And, and it's a no-go. Suspect IR laser module fail, which in turn killed one drive and then swapping over killed the other. Yeah, fair enough. If you've got a like a shorted uh, uh, laser or something, um, hooking it up to the other driver is, yeah, it's going to kill that one too. Hardware virus. Oh, yes, I've seen um, Alan Yates' um, Impossible uh, Making Valve's hey, VR work. Yes, I'll have to link in that video. Anyway, um, a parts list from Reddit. <laughs> I guess somebody on Reddit's already done a reverse engineering. It's got the protective film on that. Look at that. It's like a bought one. Let's take it apart. Made in Taiwan. I can remember when, uh, you know, everything was made in Taiwan in the 80s before uh, China came along and then it was, uh, well, it started out as Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. Unbelievable that this little piece of junk could be such a big problem. No wonder this circuit failed. It says made in Japan. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. And then it moved to Taiwan, and then it moved to China, and now it's, uh, it's moving to India or South Africa or somewhere else, isn't it? Anyway, like I s mentioned, very deep USB connector in there, but uh, it's a nice big... Uh, receptacle, so you should be able to get most USB cables in there. DC in, and uh, there's the parts list for those playing along at home. And yeah, apparently um, you get two of these, or you're supposed to have two of these as part of your, uh, you know, virtual reality system. And you know, these are the uh, tracking type modules that will help with the uh, tracking to know where your controller and your headset is within the room. So you're supposed to put these one up in each uh, diagonal corner of your room, like really high up, like two meters up, looking down like that, and um, it helps track the location within a room. So you can't do it with just one, you just do it with two. And uh, Justin mentioned it had an infrared laser, so let's crack it open. How do you get it open? Just a spudger in there, perhaps? Aha, uh -huh, a combination of adhesive and some clips. But we're in. There you go. Looks like we've got our infrared LEDs. Okay, we've got two spin in. Okay, well, obviously, you know, it's scanning the room. Um, but these look like infrared LEDs, which would just, like, have a wide band pattern shining out. Got another uh, sensor down here. Is that the, uh, like, the infrared receiver? <laughs> I like the little seven-segment display down the bottom. Little surface mount LED, seven segment LED display. That's terrific. Wow, you don't see them anymore. But anyway, it's a it's a scanning mechanism, so I'm not sure how it doesn't bounce off the, what? What's going on? Um more there's a I think we've got infrared laser driver down the bottom there, but these are like just fill LEDs or something. They've, they've got a pulse on them or something, perhaps. I Look, I don't know. I haven't looked into the workings of how the HTC Vive system actually works, but clearly they're, uh, this is to do uh, you know, three-dimensional laser scanning right around the room in a you know, whitish pattern, probably you know, 160, 170 degrees or something like that. All right, so let's try and get this mechanism out of here. And see what's what. Okay, is that going to fall out now? Yep, just comes out. Oh, look at, wow, look at the caps on the bottom there. Enormous 1500 mic jobbies. And uh, yeah, they're vented. None of that uh, Polly put the kettle on rubbish. Um, a genuine wet electrolyte, thank you very much. And uh, that'd be, of course, they need all that bulk uh, decoupling for the uh, laser driver, presumably. So here's your. Uh, this would be your infrared laser here. There's lots of stuff on the bottom side there. So, presumably, that is what, that, is that the laser driver? Chippy down in there, perhaps? All right, there's another one over here, too. We've got dual ones, so obviously this one shines into here. So, it, does it come through the middle, and then they've got a mirror in there, and it shoots out, so it goes in, and then straight up the clacker, right out. 
There's a Nidec uh, servo motor for that thing. So if you're spinning in the wrong direction, oh no, I'm going in the wrong direction. Warranty void. So we've got two of those. There is a receiver for that. So that's just picking up the, is it, no, it's not picking up, is it picking up the reflections from the, um, the, from the infrared? I don't know how they, I presume this would have just uh, shot out the laser and then you calibrate it to know where it is in the room and then the headset and the controller pick it up and then they wirelessly I guess connect back to the controller or wherever you know the main uh, controller type thing is in the system once again I've got no idea isn't that there it is oh that little LED display it's so cute it's so cute anyway I'm going to power this thing up and uh, just see if it spins around okay here she goes it's on Hello, McFly. Spin. Damn it. No LED display, nothing. It's a little button on the back. Nothing. Oh, well, that's thoroughly disappointing. But it's supposed to be broken. It's got a G sensor. Um, why would you have that in such a thing? This is designed to bolt onto your wall. It's not supposed to move. Um, I don't know. Well, I was going to say that this uh, DC barrel jack, the surface mount jobby, that looks pretty rugged. Till I tried to give it a bit of wiggle, 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 yeah, and um, it does it does move substantially because, well, there's no uh, pin on the other side to keep it rigid. Anyway, um, yeah, we've got an, um, an NXP micro on there and, uh, you know, not a huge amount extra, so there's not sure what else I can tell you apart from trying to get into this puppy to see how the laser gets through. Well, that infrared lead board, that was uh, stuck down on there good and proper. Um, that was a bit nasty. And it's not a uh, thermal thing because that's, uh, that's not a heat sink in any way. So obviously that's not uh, super duper high power. It's not like it's, uh, you know, aluminium backed PCB onto a uh, metal, you know, heat sink assembly. And there's the bottom of it down there. Looks like a little micro coax connector down there. That looks like some sort of a Wi-Fi -y thing, but... Uh, Where's the antenna? Um, where's Wally? Give you a closer up look at the board for those playing along at home. I won't go through all the uh, detail. We've already shown the parts list there. But, uh, there's not a huge amount doing. So obviously the two lasers shoot across there, down into there, and down there. Um, <laughs> they're going to come a gutter in the middle, are they? I don't know. <laughs> or do they uh, alternately fire or is it just not a problem can you uh, cross the streams there's something very important i forgot to tell you what don't cross the streams why it would be bad oh hang on i thought that was plastic but it's not this whole thing is die cast alloy so that's interesting so were they no, there's no uh, thermal pads on the bottom there, so yeah, I still contend that's uh, that's not high power at all, and that's not uh, uh, thermal adhesive tape. That just looks like regular poly put the kettle on tape. Hold on to your hat. We can get this out. Here you go. Aha! Here you go. You can see down in there, so it shines through, shines down to the bottom, and there's some sort of... Yeah, there's a horizontal array. There's like an array down the bottom. It looks flattish, but I'd say it's not. It's going to be a prism. Oh, yeah. Now you get the right angle. You can see it's a there's some sort of uh, prismy thing happening down in the bottom there. I'm going to take the rest of the screws out of that. Aha, that makes sense. What we're looking at down there is a 45 degree mirror. And the image we're looking at is actually this over here so it you can see in there it just yep <laughs> just reflects it like that so that's obvious because the rest of it here that's just the motor part so yep that's pretty uh, uh easy uh why they've got the grading like that there'll be a reason no they, they've got the same oh well they are different you know they're uh right angles to each other but uh they are the same orientation i'll tell you what i really like that motor that's sex on a stick Really? Oh, it's going straight to the pool room. So there you have it. That's the HTC Vive base station, um, as they call it, even though it's not a 
base station. It sits up on the wall, but anyway, that's what it's called, the base station. And apparently you need two of these um, to help uh, determine, the, as I said, the location of the headset and the little handheld controllery thing uh, within the room because of course the whole idea is that you can you know move around the room in like a I think it's got a three meter by three meter space or something like that maximum you can move around in um, But yeah, I believe you'd have to calibrate all that and you know, it's probably finicking business I don't know Does anyone use a HTC vibe 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 <coughs> Is it finicky does it work is it a bit meh? I don't know. I don't like these newfangled 3d VR things never been taken by them now this one's interesting, comes from just a spitting distance here, Eastern Creek, um, which is, there's a raceway there if you don't know. There's lots of, you know, industrial big companies. And I went to CLG um, out there fairly recently, so I have no idea like who it's from. Um, oh, right, okay, I fix it. I fix it. They, they did contact me and they said, hey, um, can we send something in the mailbag? And I said, yep. <laughs> By all means do. So thank you very much. These are heavy. These are the um, iFixit um, kits. I'll link them in down below. Um, I do have some iFixit stuff. I've got like a much smaller set. But wow, this looks like a Bobby Dazzler. With all the security bits. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, thank you very much from um, uh, Kelsey. Kelsia? Anyway, it's a gift from Kelsey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I fix it. Who are the masters in uh, like teardowns? They really have that down to a fine art. And by the way, if you don't know, uh, when they do like a teardown within like hours of the latest iPhone release, how they do that is they actually fly out to Australia here to like, I'm talking like spitting distance cooey of my lab here um, and there's an assembly uh, facility here which I, I'll have to get a tour of I have been uh, invited and um, that's where they do uh, their teardowns and their x-rays and everything else of um, the latest you know fruity gadget thing so that's how they do it if you want to know how they get it before everyone else they fly to Sydney because we're you know 12 hours ahead of Yankee land and uh, stuff like that so anyway um, they've sent in the Manta Precision bit set this is 65 Yankee bucks and looks like it's worth every cent take a squeeze at that and also the Protect Toolkit, I think this one's about 78. So this is, uh, it, it includes some bits, not as many uh, as the other comprehensive set, but also the gadgets for taking apart your eye fruity eye gadget thing. And I think they took pity on me. I, I believe they saw my video of me uh, repairing the iPad and they, <laughs> they just laughed at the tools I was using and uh, they wanted to send me a real set so thank you very much let's take a look at this bobby dazzler so i love the uh, magnets in the uh, in in the case there that hold it down it's really quite nice and look at that i think it's 112 bits is it man it's got everything more bits that you can poke a stick at unbelievable it's got you know it's <laughs> well as your regular phillips and flat and square and torques and security torques it's got you know, your tri wings and your uh, weird ass fruity flavored bits to open your fruity gadget and, you know, uh, stuff like that. I, I have no idea what a hook. What's a hook? Looks like it's a right angle thing that I, I don't even know what that would do. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me. Anyway, it's got a socket adapter. Don't eat the desiccant. And it comes with uh, two little, and yes, it did uh, cameo in the previous segment when I took apart that um, HTC Vive, so that's really top quality. I love the spinny on the top. No precision screwdriver set is complete without a spinny top on it, because you like you put that in your palm like that, and you just spin it like that, and you can real like nothing beats that. I'm telling you, except this Bobby does. Look at this bad boy. Wow, this is absolutely enormous to get extra torque on there for those you know really stubborn pain in the ass ones that you just can't get out. Wow. That's a beauty. Um, for 65 Yankee bucks, that set, that's worth every cent. Wow, I'm impressed by that. That's going straight to the pool room. And this bad boy, well, it certainly weighs a lot. Let's, aha, uh -huh. there you go, that's better. Knew we didn't have to use that wanky box. And why can't they just ship it like that? Don't need the wanky box, come on, get real. So, yeah, we got ourselves a little, once again, there's our little driver set. 
that's very nice looks like exactly the same driver we've got there I'll give you a look at the give you a tour of the bits there it's got I know, does it have the fruity fruity bits in it got this what is that oh it's a flex it's a flex okay a flex driver nice so you can get you know really uh, didn't get around the dunny so that allows you to get up the s bend and uh ride up the clacker and uh <laughs> that's that's nice anyway yep and this actually has like a fridge magnet backing on it and that actually holds that in place fairly securely like that geez someone was thinking well done hats off to that now we've got all our uh, fruity gadget accessories here yeah we've got uh the, the the spudger if you don't know when you see me use my poker in the videos it's actually one of it repair is noble it is indeed um it's it's a spudger and this is one my little black poker that i uh use that i've been using for years now anyway um these you need many of them um because they're uh they sort of <laughs> wear out um disposable well they're not you know one off you can use them more than once but uh yeah they do wear out because you've got to get under the glass and separate it and uh likewise with these you get three they're all identical aren't they yep and uh of course your suction cup to lift up and Ah, any static wrist strap. <laughs> nice. <laughs> At least there's none of that wireless rubbish. So once again, that's a very nice kit for 80 bucks. Uh, for, yeah, I think $78 or something. Uh, Yankee bucks. And uh, I'll leave links in down below. Because these are really very nice and great quality pouch it comes in and everything. Wow. Highly recommend that. That just keeps it all self-contained. Okay, if you're doing like field repairs and stuff like that, but I'm guessing most people would, uh, you know, uh, use this like in the lab or whatever. Um, in which case, you know, um, well, you can just put it away. Some people only have tiny labs and just get it out when you need it. Because if you're doing that uh, repair every day, you wouldn't uh, keep everything. If that was your <laughs> that was your full-time business, you wouldn't uh, keep everything in pouches like this. You'd just have them laying on the bench, ready to go at a moment's notice. But yeah they're great so i'm i'm thoroughly impressed by those i reckon they're worth every cent um it's worth paying for a quality set like that so thank you very much i fix it i'll leave it in a link down below you've got to have like a bit driver um set you know i've just got yeah, a few odd ones from j car and from ebay and stuff like that but oh wow look at this this is absolutely <laughs> it's just fantastic what a bobby dazzler winner winner chicken dinner Got one from the United States of America, USA. Um, Kevin Ag 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 A Ag A G H A E I. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's Mendham in New Jersey. Thank you very much to all my viewers in New Jersey. Quite a few, I'm sure. I wonder if I wonder how spread out the demographic is across the US. That'd be interesting. I don't think YouTube breaks down the stats into locations like that. So anyway, it's obviously not a DigiKey thing, but we have the DigiKey um, stuff. I love the material. It has a name. I keep forgetting. Every time I open one of these, I keep forgetting the name of this corrugated packaging material. It does have a technical name for it. Anyway, we have a note. No idea what that is. Spare fuse. We have a spare fuse, so we're likely to break one. Looks like Kev. Ah, pr pronounce a, a guy. <laughs> Kev a guy. Kev a guy. There you go. <laughs> Kev is a guy. Kev a guy. I love it. Anyway, this is a, um, it looks like a high voltage 40 watt jobby. Thank you very much. Uh, Nixie tube driver. Wow, that looks, that's quite substantial. Oh, oh, Rubicon caps. Sweet as. You see barrel jack in and then it tries a... Nixie Chew. Oh, and it's got a little uh, neon lamp on there. They're obviously using the neon to... Uh, and the fuse is in a little socket there. That's great. I like it. Let's check it out. And here it is. Looks very nice. It's available on uh, Tindy. I'll link it in down below. It is very pricey though. It is 150 Yankee bucks. Look at the size of that. <laughs> That's a... It's a double stacker look at that dual ceramic no he hasn't bodged that you can actually buy them uh like that actually um stacked up into uh larger values like that so you know i'm not sure of the brand of that one but you can see the uh see the plate on there they aren't just uh, solder 
bodged on there. Looks like really top quality uh, fiberglass material. Anyway, the website is neokev.com. I like that. And it's a basically 180 volt out, uh, 40 watt RMS, he claims. He reckons you can uh, pump out 40 watts from this baby all day long. And Rubicon caps, absolutely fantastic. Another little jobby in there. I really like those, uh, those screw terminals. They're kind of nice, aren't they? I don't know why you'd use those over a, you know, like a through-hole Molex or something like that. But um, anyway, um, the neon light there, just for, yeah, Danger, Will Robinson. And it's basically a uh, current mode uh, boost converter using the uh, TPS-40-211 uh, and a, a switch-in trenny in there, switch-in MOSFET, um, dual inductors. Look at the number of vias on there. Anyway, um, Kev's a mechanical engineer and this is his first project and this is really very nice for your first project. Oh, I had to put one part on the bottom. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, look at all the vias. Crazy. I don't know why some of them, are, these ones over here aren't tented. Some of them are tented, some aren't. So that was, I guess that was a goof on the uh, on the Gerbers or whatever. Anyway, um, the Kev signed it. There you go. It's very, yeah, very nice quality uh, fiberglass. Really like that. So it is. It looks like a quality bit of kit. It looks like it will probably do the business. The heat sinking looks adequate for a, you know, just the PCB heat sinking looks um, adequate for the losses on a uh, 40 watt uh, current mode boost converter like that. So there's our little fuse that we can uh, replace if we pop that baby. And is that a common mode choke there? That's kind of nice. Um, no, it's it doesn't appear to be open source. Kevin doesn't say it. I couldn't find any uh, schematics. Although, I'll link in his website, there is a whole bunch of technical info uh, developing this thing. So it's uh, well worth a read. And the issues he had with uh, subharmonic um, oscillation and stuff on the current mode controller. Yes, if you try and uh, push it too far, you can come a gutsa. And uh, Kev had to solve all those issues, so it's really interesting. Unfortunately, um, I don't have a suitable resistor, high power resistor, to pump this baby up to 40 watts, and both of my electronic loads, one only goes to 120 volts, the other only goes to 150. So unfortunately, this is 180. So I can't fully load test it and get the thermal camera out, unfortunately. Urgh. One comment I would make is that uh, the input terminals over here, you can either use the barrel jack or this, um, they're not labelled, or if they are, they're really ultra tiny and you can't see them. Like it doesn't tell you whether or not, you know, you can see it's, it's almost certainly centre positive, but you know, it's good to label these sorts of things. And I'm not actually a fan of the um, yellow solder mask, but meh, anyway, what does that say? Oh, that's got the little fuse part number down there. Oh, that's nice. If you blow it, that's, that's pretty sweet. Nice attention to detail. And it's got input and output short circuit protection. Nice uh, EMI filtering, a surge suppression, automatic restart, retry if it's overloaded so it doesn't just like completely shut down and you have to remove uh, power. Enable, disable pin which can be pulled above uh, relative to ground. So you can put in uh, an external uh, switch in there to uh, flip it off and on. Neat. A three-year parts and labor warranty. Terrific. Uh, adjustable from 170 to 190 volts. Oh, what a when I power it up under full load, but I don't, I don't, I'm pretty sure I can't even cobble something together to do that. Hmm. Oh, well, let's fire it up. No load. Let's see if it works. I mean, you can't make sure you don't like grab it because this thing like is seriously dangerous. So, yeah. Neon comes on and 180 volts. There you go. And I, as I said, I have little doubt that it's uh, going to meet its uh, power requirements. It looks uh, looks beefy enough. Now, unfortunately, I've just disconnected the power and it's bleeding down. It would have been nice maybe to have a bleeder resistor on there to uh, discharge that quicker because that's, you know, it's still dangerous for, you know, tens of seconds after 10 seconds or so of turning that off. So, yeah, I would have added that. And the issue with uh, these connectors as well is that they're exposed. Whereas if you use like a Molex plug or something like that, not only can you disconnect it without having to unscrew things, they're inherently uh, safer and you've got no uh, exposed metal as well. 
And there's the output on a scope. Clean as whistle, of course, but uh, yeah, you might get something on there under the full load, but unfortunately, you can't do that. Anyway, thank you very much, Kev. That's a really nice bit of kit. Uh, for your first project, you've really gone to town and it uh, seems to be implemented quite nicely. So anyway, leave a link down below. I do wonder how many Nixie thingies you, and what size Nixie thingies you could power with like a 40 watt, 180 volt supply. Hmm. Thank you very much, Jacob Schloss. S-C-H-L-O-S-S -S, from Huntington Beach in California. I wish you could be California. So unfortunately, I don't think this has a pull tab on it. So I'm going to have to cut into the box. Because it's got a glue sealed end on it. So, there we go. No workers. More DigiKey packing material. Packing material of choice. How much stuff did DigiKey send, a pack and send every year? It would be ridiculous. How many orders per day? Thousands? Unbelievable. Love to get a tour of the DigiKey warehouse. Yes, I'm, over, I'm aware of um, uh, Grant Imahara doing a tour, but I wanted to. No, that was Mouser, because he's sponsored by Mouser. I want a tour of the DigiKey one. Anyway, uh, they did offer. I think somebody from DigiKey did offer. If I'm ever in um, uh, the, the little town it's in, in the US, um, then, then yeah, I could get a tour. No wackers. Um, hopefully the drop bears didn't damage the package. Don't think so. Um, they're, they're pretty much only a problem, like in the city. Um, so yeah, out, out here in the suburbs, not so much. Rainbow cable. We have a CAN bus, CAN FD USD. Is this the one? Um, no, it wasn't the same person who sent in a CAM, CAN bus one the other day, was it? Uh, the other week, month, however often I do this silly thing. I started a small EV consulting company with a few co-workers, mainly doing motor control software and electronics for UAVs, but we wanted to show a little CAN FD USB adapter we made as a side project. Cool, we'll check it out. It looks like we've got a little board in here. Is that the, ah, oh, that's what, so presumably that's, yeah, that's what's inside there. Awesome, let's check it out. So here it is, the Hadou can. Isn't that neat? Comes in a really nice little uh, case, I like that. Anyway, it's got um, uh, coax uh, input as well, so a galvanic isolation, nice. And um, Suburban Embedded dot com is the website and of course your traditional uh, d9 interface as well hooks up the usb but uh, the fact that it's got uh, galvanic isolation that's really nice multi bus bus time sync now i'm not really hugely into can so um but they claim one of the killer features is support for bus to bus time sync most can controllers can time stamp a message by asynchronously grabbing a timer value when a message comes in. The Hadou can can also be a PPS sync master and send out a pulse locked to the internal timestamp counter so that other equipment can be aligned, can also be a slave to an external PPS signal. So um, there you go. If you're serious about your can stuff, then this sounds like it certainly might do the business. You can connect uh, in a master-slave uh, arrangement as well. Um, so you can order stuff over time in the um, software. It looks like they've thought of everything. Wow. And open source firmware. We're available on Tinder. Probably Amazon later this year as well. I'll link it in down below. And they're on the EV blog forum. Of course, there are beta testers wanted. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, some people on the EV blog forum have helped found this. Anyway, um, Jacob, thank you very much. So, a user guide, data sheets, quick start guides. Jeez, everything. You may need a driver for Windows. It's an STM uh, driver by the looks of it. Um, and we've got the pinouts. Can, blah, 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 Windows driver, blah, 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 usage examples, excellent. And then we've got some stuff down here. I might hook it up, see if it works. Anyway, you can see the uh, isolator here. That's beautiful. And it's one um, STM um, processor. You know, it's all the magic uh, happens in the uh, software, of course. And that one would have a uh, CAN controller in it. Would it? Or are they doing it all in software? Not entirely sure. But anyway, let's check it out. And yep, we've come a gut, so we need the driver, um, USB serial, COM3, there's CDC data as well, so we need the ST driver. Unfortunately, you go to the website, and you've got to, like, put in your sign-up to get the driver for the stupid serial port. Give me a break, ST. Bloody ridiculous. 
here we go i've generated a fake email so st's not getting my so i'm marty mcfly i am now marty mcfly yep there it is ah so you don't even need a verification not yet validate ah oh, let's go over here here we go st start your software download thank you very much on land download now hi marty <laughs> buttheads I do, what it's gone in here and it's it what and it's in a bloody zip so i've got to unzip it and it gives me all of them win seven win eight why well, I, I what i'm running windows 10 do i run the windows 7 or do i run the windows 8 i guess the windows 8 i i don't know i never used windows 8 in my life installing 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 username windows user only anyone oh god what you gotta put in your company name Okay, corporate whore, and I work for Butthead. Then we moved some, and then we got another one. Would you like to install this device? Yep, install. Ready to use. Okay. Then I'm going to make sure I have my latest update. Should I? No. Nah. Does not... <laughs> Does not recognize this product. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shit show. Thanks, ST. Let's reconnect it. Still doesn't work. Wah, 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 wah. It's already installed. USB serial device. Oh, uh, look. Sorry, I'm not going to dick around anymore. Is it because I installed the Windows 8 driver? Should I install the Windows 7? Look, I don't know. I've never used Windows 8, and there's no Windows 10 driver. Like, I, no, sorry, um, yeah, sorry guys, sorry Suburban Embedded, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure your product works fine, anyway, you're supposed to open up mini tab or whatever, um, I know it's not your fault, it's, it's the stupid ST driver, you can use Wireshark on Linux, or, uh, something like that, I don't use Linux, um, but you can, in, <laughs> open Minicom Putty or other terminal emulation program, um, so it looks like they don't have their own, program it looks like it's just a serial interface um type thing so okay um yeah it, it seems like you've done the business with this so i'm sure it works a treat but sorry i'm under time i have serious time constraints it's taken me too long to get this video out as it is so i'll have to link it in down below catch you next time <laughs>